Hey, how we doing? Mike Cruz here, HTI Safety and Training. We're going to talk about a new format, which isn't so new. It's the same format. It's just that we're coming to you through MindFlash. MindFlash is our learning management system to get the word out to everybody in our affiliate companies across the state of Kansas, because I know we're not just located in Manhattan. Okay, so we're doing the toolbox talk for Monday, January the 2nd, 2017. Okay, and this topic today is for all HTI and affiliate companies, okay? This topic is on power tools, okay? Now, on this sheet, you'll see a few different types of power tools on here, okay? We're going to talk about power tools in general because I know that all companies don't always use the same power tools, okay? So what I want to do is touch upon these, maybe give you a few tips, pointers, some general ideas about what can happen, what can go wrong, what has gone wrong, okay? And then we'll sum it up, and then uh, we'll just kind of just talk a little bit about our power tools. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. When working with power tools, we should always keep some basic rules in mind, all right? So it has a list of about five things that we should keep in mind when we're working with, well, power tools, okay? The number one, rule should be keep all of our power tools in good condition with regular maintenance. So keeping all of our power tools in good condition, what do, we, what do we mean by good condition? Do we mean that we should have a few broken blades on our chop saw, that it's okay if one of these is broke off or this is cut, you know, some of these things, is it okay to have these? No, really it's not okay to have busted up blades on your chop saw putting the wrong size blade on your chop saw because you're using a quickie saw blade for a chop saw blade, okay? They're different widths, all right? Your cords have to be up to manufacturer specification per OSHA, okay? It's not my rule, this is OSHA's rule. We're simply trying to make sure that you don't get hurt and enforce that before OSHA has a chance to make it your way and discover that because we could possibly be fined, okay? When we get fined, that hurts one, our reputation, Two, we could get hurt because, well, we already got zapped by this busted up cord. Or three, it could really mainly hurt our bonuses as well because we're all working towards the same thing is to have quality work done, quality production while being safe. Because we all know that one mishap with safety can erase a good job site production and coming in on time and profit okay so we want to definitely touch on that and make sure that we know that we got to keep our tools in good condition and how do we do that we need to inspect them periodically don't just overlook them oh you know I've been using that for years and well it's time to it's time to really capitalize on those things that we need to get fixed okay so take the extra time get those things fixed for us alright number two use the right power tools for the job Okay, we're all guilty of using maybe an impact and to use it as a hammer or, or we're using um, a two by four to hit something instead of a hammer. Okay, we need to use the right tool for the job. Okay, if we don't have the right tool for the job, we're more likely to get injured or injure someone else or damage the property. So it's very important that we need to really use the right tool for the job because all in all, it's always going to be better on your end. Okay, safety and production wise. All right. Number three, we need to examine our power tools for damage before use. We kind of covered that in number one, okay? Never use the damaged power tools, okay? Well, never is an absolute, okay? But truly, this is, this is the real deal. You should not use something that is busted, something that needs maintenance, because it could come back on you in a harmful manner, okay? It could come back and hurt somebody else that you're working with, okay? So we definitely want to correlate step three, rule three, with number one as well. Number four, use our power tools according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Okay, that means that I know we don't always use the manufacturer's recommendations because it's a big pamphlet full of words that we really don't have time to use, but did you know that OSHA kind of piggybacks off of the manufacturer's recommendation and coincides with what they suggest? So it's very important that you read those things. Okay, it's very important that you take an extra five minutes to try to read that and, and kind of sift through the need to know things, okay? The width of the blade, um, how many RPMs is things running, okay? Um, maybe what type of extension cord we should use with this, okay? And we all know we need to be using that 12 gauge, 
okay? Because that's, that's a really good gauge for what we do, all right? It holds up to, one, the abuse, and two, the weather. So keep those things in mind, all right? Manufacturing recommendations is a thick booklet, but you can sift through there, find the things you need to, okay? The fifth rule or suggestion is provide and use properly the correct PPE for the work being performed. So as long as you're adhering to our handbook policies by wearing your hard hat, wearing your safety glasses 24-7, okay? Wearing that shield when you're using that chop saw, okay? You're gonna be just fine, okay? So keep in mind, use your PPE 24-7 like you're supposed to, and you got nothing to worry about. So that fifth rule is basically taking care of itself. So really, you're only looking at about four things you're looking, looking at uh, during the use of your power tools, okay? Um, down here, it talks about, remember, before you use any power tools on the job, you must first have been trained according to manufacturer's recommendations, OSHA standards, company policies and procedures. Um, this is the time where if you have a foreman, you have any questions on that job site right now, ask him something. Pick his brain. See what he knows about the topic because if you're a little less experienced, hey, that's all right to have questions because I'm sure your foreman had questions at one point in time too. Okay, that's how we make each other better. We ask questions and help each other through. Okay? Here's a few places you can find regulations for power tools. Okay, believe it or not, there's OSHA regulations about power tools. You wouldn't think so, but yeah, there is. You can look in your OSHA manual. Um, you can ask Bert or myself. You can also get online and go to OSHA.org okay, and, and find, these, find these regulations to help you through. Okay, And I know today's smartphone age and in, in the technology age, it's really easy to get your hands on them. Okay? So at break, if you have time, go ahead and mess around. Go to uh, OSHA.org gov.org and see what you can find on these power tools okay you might be surprised the very last thing on this toolbox talk is kind of a uh, it's in bold and it says one thing it says safety starts with you and that is the most true thing okay safety starts with you remember that it starts with you when you wake up okay it starts with you putting your seatbelt on if you want to when you're driving to work it starts with you being safe at work okay safety starts with each and every one of us every day we wake up Okay, Mike Cruz, HTI Safety and Training on your toolbox for January the 2nd, 2017. Hey, be safe out there.